YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast, which means this is a broadcast of opinion and it's another reaction video. This time it's a reaction to a colon mark hyphen lowercase k Kishon colon Christopher video on rum. Now this ties into and correlates with the podcast that I recently did for the Quantum Grammar Shoot 103 YouTube, where I talk about this man's vacating of the YouTube platform. Now, although he does claim to have done this on his own, I'm very suspect of that. And I go into that in depth on uh, Quantum Grammar Shoot 103. This one is an extension of that because, as I predicted, I did get some sort of backlash from his followers, true believers, and acolytes defending him and, and saying all these things that this man does and blah, 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 and saying that in addition to teaching quantum grammar, Mark also teaches other things. And while he does teach a lot of things, if you tell me that Marcus Sean Christopher teaches quantum grammar, you have now just lost any credibility credibility that you may have had in my eyes. Because I would dare you, triple dog dare you, I challenge you to show me any video where he actually syntaxes an entire sentence and explains it, or uses a correct sentence structure in the manner that Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller taught for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. Show me. In any case, this is an extension of that. I guess this is his explication of why he left YouTube. And I'm going to react to it. Here we go. Oh, one other thing. I don't normally like to get involved in drama or things like that. Sometimes, however, I feel it's important and necessary in teaching the psychological aspects of this grammar that I do delve into it a little bit, simply because I'm showing you the psychology of how to cultivate a fact-based forensics performance versus a belief-based forensics performance. And I'll show you what I mean as we go along. So let's look at the description of this video. It says, medical misinformation, financial nexus, political misinformation, death of YouTube. And it says, with your support as patrons, the Federal Postal Court will be able to put these people in prison. What people would that be, Mark? The owners of YouTube? <laughs> and why would you want to put them in prison? Aren't prisons filled with too many nonviolent 
drug offenders, politicians, embezzlers? Shouldn't prisons only be used for violent criminals, rapists, and murderers? Human traffickers? I guess we got to make rooms for YouTubers, according to this guy. Here we go. Good day, folks. Listen up carefully. In regards to YouTube, I think YouTube is a very precarious uh, channel to be in. It's probably one of the channels that also, or platforms that do the most amount of stealing. That's interesting that he says something like that, because as I shared in For the Quantum Grammar Shoot 103, when I was first taking Mark's 12-week course in 2017, he had a completely different view of YouTube. Completely different. He has since obviously modified that view. And censorship. As a result, I will be moving away from YouTube and I will be preparing myself to shut down YouTube on myself. So I don't want to use YouTube anymore. Okay, and I will be removing the footages and transferring it onto things like Rumble. Now, here, that's that's what you need to know. So I'm giving you closure on that. And so now he's claiming that he's the one that shut down the the channel, as I shared with you in the Quantum Grammar Shoot 103. Here's the thing, though. Think about it. If you've invested hundreds of or even thousands of hours into YouTube videos on your YouTube channel, and he's been on YouTube for far longer than I have. Would you really just delete the whole thing when you have hundreds of thousands of followers? Would you just delete the whole thing by choice? Or does it make more logical sense that for whatever reason, YouTube was going to delete your channel themselves? Because what YouTube content creator would do such a thing? I don't know of any YouTube content creator who would do such a thing. I mean, why wouldn't you just leave the channel up and then move to another venue, but leave up what you already have up? If only for the sake of educating those individuals who may come on YouTube and actually see your videos and then be able to go to Rumble or whatever platform you choose to use now, but at least you're still there on YouTube. Why would you just totally vacate YouTube? It makes absolutely no logical sense that someone would do that unless they were being forced to do it, unless YouTube was doing it for them. I mean, it does sound all well and, and heroic that he's just going to take everything off of YouTube because he doesn't want to be on it anymore. Yeah, that, that sounds like a great hero story, but the practicality of it suggests something else to me notice as well so the second element to listen carefully the community guidelines of YouTube essentially means that anybody making any sort of genuine critique will be targeted for censorship in other words they were removing it that's not true that's not true at all because I have made genuine critiques on Coral Blade Grotto my other YouTube channel. And I have been challenged by YouTube. And I have accepted and met that challenge and won. I've never had a video taken down. YouTube attempted to take down a video or two, but I met them on the geometric level playing field and I challenged them to show me where there was misinformation in my video so I could fix it. And they couldn't, so they put the video back up. So it's something that's easily solved if you are actually sharing truthful, factual content. If you're not sharing truthful, factual content that can be backed up by a continuance of the evidence and easily proven, and it's inflammatory, vitriolic type of uh, content, espousing, let's say, terminology like final solution, which comes from Nazi Germany, then I can see why YouTube would want to take your stuff down. So let me give you the ramifications of what that means. At the moment, you know 
that anything, it, any medical things that we speak about or anybody speaks about, they censor it and they call it, and this is the key word, medical misinformation. So any critique that comes from anybody, they, they discriminate, uh, discriminate against it and censor it by calling it misinformation. Full stop. This is the ramifications of what they are now going to reach for. If you give anything uh, of a nature that is talking about finance, you know, uh, monies, etc., they will deem that as well as uh, they will deem that as being financial misinformation. Another untruth that is not true at all. I follow several channels that give financial advice. I think Chuck Barone is one, and indefinitely Gregory Manorino. Gregory Manorino publishes two videos a day. He's been the most spot on with his assessments of the fiction stock market and things like that of anybody I've ever seen. He hasn't been censored. He's out there putting out all kinds of anti-government, anti-Federal Reserve, all types of stuff, anti-debt market content where he's actually you know cussing and, and galvanizing people to get out on the street and, and do something about this and prepare and actually calling members of the federal reserve not humans that they're 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 monsters and lizards and all kinds of stuff and, and he has way more subscribers than i do and probably more than than mark did and he's on youtube do you know why because the things he's saying are true. He can back them up. It's what he does 24-7 is the stock market. Again, YouTube is going to go after those people who don't know what they're talking about. Who are lying, spreading, as he says, to use a fiction term, misinformation. If you can't back it up, if you cannot back up what you're saying, YouTube's going to come after you. Period. End of story. That's been my experience as a YouTube creator for the past five years. And on my grammar channel, I have never, not once, had a problem. And if you speak about anything of a political nature, they will deem that also as being political misinformation. Again, not true. The individual I mentioned before, Gregory Manorino, he badmouths the president all the time, calling him a zombie and blah, blah, blah. It's really quite comical, and he, he's fine to move forward with whatever he's doing. He puts out two videos a day. No one's stopping him. And he has, again, way more subscribers than this guy did. If you criticize any persons or any man or anything like that, they'll cancel you because they've created a community guideline where if anybody says I'm I'm hurt by that comment they uh, culture cancel you they cancel culture you now that may have a bit of truth to it however I feel that's more of a psychological thing um, the cancel culture thing because you have a lot of people on both sides and there are so many platforms that people can go to that I, I think, for, for me, I think that's a non-issue. This includes the transgender movement and etc. What that does, it, uh, it quietens any dissents or any critique that is offered to anybody. Uh, for so far, you know, I've been able to successfully do these things, but I can see where it's going to develop. Okay. And there will always be other outlets. And one of them is uh, Rumble, uh, BitChute, etc. So these are the things that I'll be using. And I'll be using Rumble and BitChute and things like that to transfer the wealth of knowledge and the library that I have built up over since 2012 or 11 or something like that on YouTube. The transition period is already taking place. In regards to PayPal for my, you know, for my students generally, 
I think also PayPal is starting to become more and more precarious to people. That's why I think 70 to 80 million account holders just simply closed their accounts and left. Now, that's one thing I'm on the same page uh, with Mark on is the PayPal thing. Uh, they made some extreme modifications to the terms and conditions of PayPal, so I completely just vacated that venue. It's ridiculous what they've done. And, of course, the beautiful thing about contract is it's all by consent, and so I no longer consent to their terms and conditions, so I vacated the vessel. Now, what you saw there, I was scrolling around. I wanted to show you how many subscribers he has here. 677. I'm not sure what he had over on YouTube. I want to say maybe 200,000, maybe. So why would a YouTuber who has so many hundreds of thousands of subscribers just totally delete their channel, sacrifice those subscribers to come over here to have only a small fraction of subscribers who would do that willingly and if this was a, a a transition of his own free will why wouldn't it be a more gradual thing again the only logical answer for me is that he was forced to leave YouTube deleted his channel that's the only thing that makes logical sense to me have decentralized systems and decentralized cryptocurrency wallets decentralized banking decentralized from all of these things you know the tricks and traps students and etc they're all doing very well the point is to walk away from the centralization albeit the false sense the false sense of security that uh, centralization creates and take 100 percent custody of all of your affairs thank you for listening <laughs> did, ladies and gentlemen this is on a personal note did you see what he just did did you see he went like that ladies and gentlemen if you're new here you have to forgive this next part what have i been doing at the end of most of my videos lately i go salute right what did he just do wow so my basic assessment of what he's saying is that he was forced off of youtube because he was posting things of an inflammatory conjecture speculative manner that cannot be proven now, I know that, you know, I got comments about the, uh, for the Quantum Grammar Shoot 103, where his, some of his true believer followers um, came on and, and were criticizing me, saying, oh, stick to the grammar. Mark does, you know, bigger and better things with human trafficking and blah, 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 putting people in prison. Okay, show me the proof there. Ladies and gentlemen, show me anything tangible that this guy has done what i do is i teach a grammar that can enable you or anyone else to safeguard yourself you just have to put the work in to do it i'm not here to collect money from people to tell them about this that or the third that we're all going to be doing but never no one ever really does or is ever ever any proof of anybody ever doing it no i'm actually teaching grammar show me where this guy has taught any grammar it isn't there and the only reason why i'm making this video or paying attention to this man is the fact that he felt that i was important enough to slander me on his website in the public all of this is grammar. Correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Okay? To say that this man teaches that is to participate in a belief. Because show me where he teaches it. Show me where he tells you how to create a document contract postal vessel court venue with correct mechanics. This is a man that 
uh, claims to be some sort of judge. Let me see if he puts his title on here. He claims to be an of the global chief federal postal court judge. Okay. This is what he claims to be. How so? I rest my case. This is a man who claims to be some sort of representative for the one by 1.9 flag. And he can't even syntax an entire sentence. So it is what it is. Hopefully this will be the last video in which I do something like this. Uh, I'd like to move on to bigger and better things. But sometimes, you know, I do get involved in this type of things from time to time. But I tire of it very quickly. And I hope that I've shown to those logical and critical minded individuals what exactly is going on with this individual. And it doesn't really have to do with, you know, my opinion with anything other than dollar signs. That's it. Thank you. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.